OK, everybody, let's get started. So we're going to pick up where we uh, left off from last day. OK, so uh, last day, I was talking about, is this thing still working? Hello? OK. Um, so uh, last day, I was talking about variables. Right? So a variable in Bash, um, when you assign a value to a variable, uh, Bash is a bit odd in that you cannot put spaces around the equal sign. Uh, because what Bash will do, it will try to um, white space. It'll try to, uh, yeah, it'll try to break the spaces um, between the, uh, around surrounding the equal sign. Right? So if you try name space equals dollar, uh, space dollar PWD, you get an error. And if you try name equals space dollar PWD, you get a different error. Right? But they're both related to the fact that you use spacing. Uh, so let's see what you get exactly. Okay, so name equals dollar. So with spaces everywhere, right, you end up getting this. Right? Uh, and so now you have to decipher this. So if you put this in a script and then you run your script and then you get this error out, you have to decipher what's going on. Right? And so. Um, bash outputs command name not found did you mean blah 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 right um, and so from there you can conclude that it's trying to interpret name as a command right instead of a variable assignment right so name space to bash as far as bash is concerned that's just a command right and now you have an ill-formed command right uh, well you, you don't have a command name name now the really strange part is if you did have a command name name bash would try to run the command right uh, and that's even weirder, right? Because um, now your script is going to have some really strange results uh, because it's going to try to run the command and then assign something to it, right? OK, so if you do name equals space, right? Now it tells you something else, right? Now it says uh, home Burton bin is a directory, which is also weird, right? So, um, uh, so that's another weird. Um, error that uh, Bash will output, right? And from this uh, here, it's not clear what's going on, um, but we'll come back to that some other time. Okay? Just be aware of uh, when you're creating variables, right, uh, and assigning values to them. There's no spaces around the equal sign. Okay. Variables in Bash have no type, right? Um, so as far as the shell is concerned, everything's a string um, until it's not, essentially, right? So everything's a string or it's an integer, depending on the context in which you're trying to um, use the variable, um, which is also a little weird, right? Um, in Java, you know, it's strongly typed, so you're used to having uh, types associated to every variable, right? Uh, if you really like Python, then you're more used to variables not having types at all. Um, but what's not, uh, what you're not used to is that a variable is a string, except when it's not, and then it's an integer, right? So that's a bit weird. Anything that you can expand into a string, you can store in a variable, right? And that's also weird. Right? Anything that can be expanded into a string can be stored in a variable, right? Which is very odd. So all of these work, believe it or not, right? A equals two means assign the string two to A, right? It's not the it's not the integer two, right? As far as Bash is concerned, that's the string two, right? Uh, if you use the double quotes, right, then you get whatever is inside the double quotes assigned to B. Right? So uh, remember, double quotes suppress the word breaking. Here's a funny one. Right? Double quotes, dollar sign A, dollar sign B inside the quotes is effectively string concatenation after uh, substituting the values of A and B. Right? Uh, so let's, I'll do that one in a second on the um, shell. Uh, D equals dollar sign LS minus D star. Right? So the LS minus D star, you know that's, uh, that lists the contents of a directory. Right? Uh, the minus D means if it's a directory name, just list the name, don't list the contents of the directory. Right? Dollar sign with the round brackets means this is a command substitution. Right? So whatever gets returned, uh, whatever gets printed to standard out um, is the value that gets assigned to D. Right? Also weird, E equals file star, so that's a path name expansion. Right? File star, path name expansion, anything that matches the file name file star uh, will now get assigned to E. Right, so let's uh, try all of those. Right, so a equals two. Right, 
uh, b equals hello, uh, whatever. Right? C, right? Now, if you want to, uh, you can do this in a, in a few different ways. Oh, I have to, oh, let's do it this way. Let's see what happens. Right? Echo C. To hello world. So that works? Good? Right? Um, and then D is equal to dollar sign, round bracket, ls minus d star, closing round bracket. Right? So again, it's going to run ls minus d star, take whatever gets output to standard out, and assign that to d. Right? So on my computer, I get that. Right? Now it's not in brackets, right? So sorry, it's not inside quotes. Right? That's what I get when I uh, type ls minus d star right, on the command line. Right, everything's separated nicely, so there's, everything's in columns. But when you assign it to a variable, right, all, of the, um, all of the white space gets merged into single spaces. Right? If you want to preserve everything, uh, where is it? Here it is. Right? If you want to preserve the contents and the formatting exactly, right, double quote, uh, sorry, here, there. Right? And now, oh, uh, sorry, you still don't get it. Well, that's fun. Um, oh, wait, command substitution. So, well, let's see if we can get it. I don't know if you can get it. No, can't get it. All right, so I guess you can't get it. Um, and then E is equal to, oh, file, right. So let's do ls star. I need to find a bunch of files. Oh, I, I nuked them all the other day. OK, so touch, uh, file. Uh, one through nine. Sorry, dot dot nine. T. Right, so I got a bunch of things to start with file. So now when I do E equals uh, file star. Right, and then echo E. You get out all of the, uh, everything that matches um, file star. Right, so there's your path name expansion happening. Okay, if you want to get the contents of a directory, don't do D or E. Uh, there's a better way to do it. Okay, the fact that Bash automatically creates variables when you uh, try when they are first used uh, leads to very strange errors, right? So here's a little script. I think it's called uh, what's it called? Uh, I have this. I'll show you the script in a second. I forgot what I called it. So what does it do? So it takes in, right? So dollar one. Remember that's command argument number one. Right, so it looks like this uh, script is looking for um, a command argument. Right, it assigns that value to file name, and then it moves whatever file name is to whatever that is. Right, so it's trying to move file name to um, file name, then a one at the end. Right, so it tries to rename a file by appending one to the end of the file name. Who's got a radio on? Where does that come? Uh, anyway, someone's got a radio going on. Here it is. Append one dot shell. Right? So if we run this script, so I'm going to try to do append one shell, right? So it takes in one argument, so file one dot text. Run it, and you get move cannot move file one dot text to empty string, no such file or directory. Right? Which is also strange. Right, so what's going on here? Right. So when bash sees dollar file name one, right, uh, it thinks that's a variable. Right. So it's not like um, your other programming languages where you have to declare the variable before you use them. Right. As soon as you use a variable in bash, it makes the variable for you. So it thinks there's a variable called dollar file name one, but there isn't. Right. Um, if you try to use a variable that has no value that's set, then it's just uh, it's null. Right? And so that's why you're getting this message here. I can't move it to the empty string or to null. Right? So it can't move file one to null. Right? And that's because as far as bash is concerned, that's all one variable name, right? um, which is weird. Right? If, you want to do, if you want to append the one to the end of that, right, then you have to disambiguate the file name, right? the variable file name. Right? So you slap the braces around it. And now bash knows, oh, they mean the variable file name. Right? So it's always safe 
to use the braces around your variables, right? And it saves you from errors like this. Now, I will warn you, though, when you look online, right, um, most uh, bash programmers do not surround the variable names in braces unless they have to. Right, so you have to be you have to be on the watch out for this one. So if I save that and run that one, where is here? All right. So now append one shell file one dot text. Right. No error message. Is there a file file one dot text one? There is. Right. Okay. So now that works. Right. So watch out for that one. That's a very hard to debug error. Right, so there's the solution. Okay. Okay, conditional statements. So uh, basically, you know, your programming structures, you've got conditional statements, you've got loops, you've got variables. Right? Uh, Bash doesn't really have um, much of anything else. Right? So that's about that's more or less what you need to know to do. Oh, and then you have functions, right? So you can write a bash function as well. Uh, so we're just going to work through all of the basic programming constructs now, right? Uh, today we're only going to get to the if statements um, because again, there's a lot you have to watch out for in Bash. So when you look at the Bash if statement, it looks a little weird, right? So first of all, at, on the surface, it looks like any other if statement, right? In any other language, right? You've got if, then you've got else if, you got else, right? Um, you can have as many else if um, parts as you want. But you can only have one else part, and it has to be at the end. Right? And uh, the else if and the else, they're optional. Right? Same as any other programming language, more or less. The weird part is that the condition here, right? Sorry. Um, the condition, right? They don't look like conditions, right? It reads, those are, those are commands, right? So you're going to run a command and use the result of the command as your condition which is strange, but that's the way bash works, right? Um, then there's a semicolon, then there's a the word then. Uh, there is another way to write this if you don't like that construct. Um, so you can write it as if, and then what am I calling it? Test commands. Right? So if you don't like the semicolon then, you can put the then on the next line. And everything's fine, right? And then continue, then indent here, right? And then you go. So the semicolon is not required, um, but if you most, ba I think most Bash programmers write it like this. I don't care if you write it like that or like that. Either one's fine, right? Just be consistent in how you're writing them. Right. So what's going on with these test commands? Okay. So here's an example of a command as a condition, right? So there's my command. Right, ls minus a root user, right? Um, which I mean, if you're used, to, you know, if you're coming from Python or Java, that's very strange, right? You're expecting some sort of conditional there, right? Uh, then also, if uh, so, if I can list the contents of that directory, then it's going to output test command true. Otherwise, it's going to output test command false, right? And that's exactly what happens. In fact, right? Where is it? Test, oh, wait, test, did I not? I guess I didn't save it. Sorry, let me quickly whip up the file. Come on. Okay, so copy that. And save it as, what is it called? Uh, Cond x. Was it? Oh, never mind. It's ready here. Cancel. Uh, okay. Come on. Go away. All right. Where is cond x? It's supposed to be open. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. I'm just going to do it this way. Okay, there it is. All right. Uh, run it. So cond x. Um, what happens? Okay, so it actually outputs the result of the command, right? So it runs the command, right? It'll actually run that command, uh, oh, that command, right there, right? And then in this case, it does in fact 
print out test command true. Now, if you cause this command to um, produce an error, blah, 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 like that, right? There is no directory root, blah, 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 right? Then what ends up happening is you get that, right? So you get the error message, right? And then it prints out test command is false, right? So notice that the program doesn't stop running; it actually keeps running, right? So the interpreter keeps chugging even if it encounters an error, which is also strange, but true, right? So what's going on is that it's looking at the result of this command. Now, what exactly is it looking at? Right? So it turns out commands in uh, bash, um, they, uh, sorry, not bash, commands in um, Unix or Linux, um, they return an integer value back to the system when they terminate. Right? So when a command finishes, it spits back some integer value. Okay? And uh, the, if the if statement is, look, the condition in the if statement is checking for the value that's um, the exit status value. Right? So it's looking at that integer value and determining whether or not that's true or false. Zero in bash means false, uh, means true, okay? Any non-zero value is false, right? Zero true, non-zero false, right? And you can look at the, you can look at the exit uh, status of a command by looking at the variable uh, uh, question mark, right? So the question mark variable stores the exit status of the most recently executed pipeline, right? So if you do cal say, Uh, say mu, right? You get that, right? Did that s successfully um, finish? Well, you can always look at dollar question mark. The answer is zero, right? So we know that cow say completed successfully, right? If you try something like ls minus d, blah, 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 right? You get an error. And if you query the return, uh, the exit status, in this case, you get two, right? Uh, some programs will tell you what the exit status means. Uh, most don't, right? So sometimes that exit status is significant, right? Uh, it may be indicating something in particular, right? Uh, most of the time it doesn't, right? So all you know is that it either returns zero if it's successful or something else um, if it's not successful, right? And you can, uh, you can get the result of the last executed command by looking at percent sign. Um, bash has these commands called true and false, right? So the word true is not uh, the Boolean value true. It's a command, right? Because everything in uh, bash, uh, as far as an if statement is concerned, the conditions are all commands. So true is a command whose exit status is always zero. False is a command whose exit status is always one, right? Uh, and so you can try them out, right? Just in your, on your prompt, just type in true and then echo out the uh, value of question mark. You'll get zero, right? Type false and then echo out the, the value of the question mark, you'll get something else. You'll get a non zero value. Right? Okay, so, um, so I have to run some command, right, to actually, uh, in, uh, as the condition for an if statement. Um, now, normally in an if statement, you want to test some condition, right? So um, if you have to run a command, there has to be some command, right, where you intend the result to be used as a condition. Right? So in other words, you have to be able to write a condition somehow, feed it to a command, and then the command has to spit back zero or non-zero. Right? Uh, so the command that you use in bash is called test. Right? And it has the form test expression, right? where expression is going to be some kind of uh, unusual Boolean expression. Right? Uh, most people don't use the word test. Right? Uh, most programmers will write it this way. So square bracket, space. Space is important. right? Expression, space. So the second space is also important, right? The reason this space is important is because the command is actually the opening brace, right? So the name of the command is actually the opening brace, which means it needs a space after it for bash to interpret it as a command, right? OK, so what kinds of expressions can you feed to test, right? So there's uh, five different types. Uh, we'll only be able to get through four of them today. Number one, the miscellaneous expressions. So those are basically the expressions that don't fit into the other four categories. File expressions are expressions that you use to test um, conditions about files. String expressions are expressions you use to test conditions about strings. Integer expressions are conditions you use to test uh, conditions about integers. 
And then next day, uh, is actually, it might take two lectures to cover this part here. Um, the string regex expressions um, are uh, expressions you use to test strings and regular expressions. OK. So anything that doesn't fall into one of the other categories, I've called miscellaneous. That's not the official name. Uh, I don't know if they have an official. I don't know if they have an official name. Right? The only command on this table that's of interest to us right now is the first one. Right? So you've got this weird expression minus v var name, minus v space variable name. Right? That expression is true. Right? Uh, if var name has been assigned a value. Right? So in other words, if you've written var name equals something somewhere. Right? Um, then that'll be true. Right? As long as the something on the right-hand side uh, has also been assigned a value. Okay? The other two um, are not terribly important for the time being, but they're there for completeness. Right? Um, so let's look at the, uh, oh, sorry. We'll come back to minus v in a second. Right? So remember what minus v does, because right? we're not really ready to do anything with it yet. OK, the file expressions. Now, files are fundamental to Unix. Right? You know that everything on a Unix, uh, in Unix is basically a file. Right? So it's not unusual that a lot of scripts are basically do nothing but look at files. Right? Look at and manipulate files. So it turns out there's a bunch of expressions. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it's a lot right? uh, for evaluating the status of files. Okay? So the, the complete list is here if you want to see it. Right? Just hit that link up, uh, and you'll get the whole list. The next page uh, shows the ones that are meaningful to us at the moment. Right? So if you've got a file name, file 1, and you have a second file name, file 2, then file1-ef file2, right? uh, that returns true if those two files have the same inode number on the same device. Right? So what does that mean? You know that they're the same file. Right? File1-nt, file2. Uh, says uh, returns true as long as file one is newer than file two, right? File one minus ot file two returns true if file one is older than file two, right? Minus d file, does that file exist, right? So does it actually exist on the system on the file system, right? And is it a directory, right? So that basically tells you whether a file is a directory. E tells you, does the file exist? It doesn't care what the type of the file is, right? Is the file there somewhere? Uh, not somewhere, is the file there, right? Minus F file, right? Does the file exist and is it a regular file? So not a directory or one of the special files, right? Minus R is the file readable, minus W is the file writable, and minus X is the file executable, right? All right, so how do you use these things? Let's take a look. So here's a program that tries to evaluate the status of a file. OK, so it's called test file. Right? First thing it does is it grabs the first input argument, right, $1, and assigns that to the variable file. Right? OK, so if square bracket, right, space uh, after and before the square brackets, minus E dollar $file. Right? So does the file exist? Right? If the file doesn't exist, you pop out down to the else, right? and you, get, uh, you echo file does not exist. Right? OK. But if the file does exist, then we go into the if statement body. Right? And now we have another if statement. So yes, you can nest if statements just like in most other programming languages. Right? If square bracket space right, minus f file. Right? Then that's, uh, that's the test for whether or not file is a regular file. Right? Minus D will test if file is a directory. Right? Minus R will test if the file is readable. Minus W, is it writable? Minus X, is it executable? Right? Notice the warning in the bottom right-hand corner. There's a problem in the script um, that may not be apparent uh, until it becomes apparent. Right? There's one other thing in the script that we haven't talked about yet. There is that exit command. Right? So exit 1 returns the number 1. Uh, well, it stops the script from running, and then it returns the number 1 back to the uh, kernel. Right? So that's how you can look at the um, exit status of a program. Exit on its own returns back 0 to the uh, kernel. Right? Um, or exit space 0 will return back 0. Right? Uh, so uh, you might see scripts at the very bottom write exit 0 right? if, they, uh, if they exit successfully. Right, um, but it's uh, it's optional. You don't have to do that. 
Right? If you don't have an exit uh, statement in a script, uh, then zero is returned back to the kernel. Okay, so let's take this thing out for a spin and see if it works. Uh, so first over here, where is it? Test file, right? So there it is. Right. Uh, I already have all the permissions to run this, so I'm just going to run it. So let's look at what's in my home directory first. So I've got all these files, right? So let's do test file. Uh, well, let's look at a regular file, right? So file two is just a plain old file, right? So it spits out, it's a regular file, it's readable and it's writable, but it's not executable, right? Which makes sense. Sorry, hang on, this is really bothering me now. Where is it coming from? Oh, no. Ah. It could be, I suppose. Can you guys hear it too? Yeah. Yeah, it's really. Hmm. All right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. It sounds? I don't know. Anyway. Um, let's look at the directory. Uh, so dir00. So dir00 is a directory. It's readable. It's writable. It's executable. Right? And you can check all this, right? So check by doing minus al. Right? So, oops, sorry. Minus ALD. There we go. Right? So you can see that, in fact, I do have read, write, and execute permission on that directory. Right? Uh, notice that the test um, is for the current user. Right? So whoever ran the script, that's who the test is for. So I'm, I'm the one running the script, so it returns true. Uh, so it says it's also executable. For, uh, sorry, it says it's writable because it's me that's running the script. Okay, uh, now, when does this, so where's the bug? Everything seems to work, right? Um, but uh, a file with spaces. Right, so notice I have a file now called a file with spaces.txt. And now what happens when I feed this? to the program. Uh, a, oh, so to feed it in, I have to do something like this. Right, I have to quote the name, because it's got spaces in the name. And now you get the strange error, uh, um, you get this strange error um, message. Right? Um, and it also tells you a file with spaces.txt does not exist. Right? So there's two things weird that's going on. Right? So that last message, right, it looks like the shell really did get the correct file name. Uh, but something happened on line six, right? Uh, at least we hope, in, we hope something happened on line six, right? So there's line six, right? And you look at it and you say, well, everything looks fine, right? Um, but what's the problem? Anybody, anybody? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening, right? So how do I suppress the, um, the, the word splitting? Double quotes, right? Can't use single quotes, because single quotes will give me the string dollar file, which is not what I want, right? I still want the variable name, but I want to suppress the word spacing. So where is, what is this thing called again? Test something, test, here it is. Here, I have the corrected version. There is the corrected version, right? Every time you go to test the file, Right? You have to enclose it in double quotes. Right? Um, the problem here is that um, you, uh, a lot of people will test their, their scripts, right? but never feed in a file name that has spaces or unusual characters in it. Right? And they'll never catch this error right? until they hand out the script to the rest of the world, and then suddenly people start complaining. Right? You have to suppress the white space, uh, the word breaking, the word, yeah, the word breaking here. Right? Uh, similarly, you have to suppress it here. Right, and here, and here, and here, and here. You don't have to suppress it here because it's already inside double quotes. Right, that's why the error message actually prints out correctly. Yeah. Are you connected with your PS4 to, uh, to Windows? Yeah. So just Google that, and it will tell you. Right. I mean, it's it's, it's a standard question, right? It's 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 exact. I mean, no, it, uh, that's how I figured out how to do it. Right. Just look it up. So. Um, I don't know what happens if you're in Ubuntu and you type code directly. 
Um, it may actually install everything you need for it. But yeah, it's just a plugin. There's a plugin that you can get, and it's, uh, it's basically some client server thing that talks to Ubuntu. It's really cool that it works, I think. Yeah. No, it's that, that's a good question, right? I, I wasn't trying to be sarcastic with my answer. Um, doo -doo, doop. OK, so watch out for that. Oh, wait, this is wrong. Uh, where am I? Uh, here. No, still wrong. OK. So it's always a good idea to enclose any variables uh, and command substitutions in double quotes to limit the effects of word splitting. OK? Uh, and that's especially true when a variable contains a file name. Right? Because um, even though you're discouraged from using spaces in Linux for your file names, it does happen. Right? Because other operating systems use them. And if you want to grab files from other operating systems, which is very common, you have to deal with them. Uh, the other nice thing about this, oh, there's something else. Uh, we didn't try something else. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Test. Sorry, I have a few test things. Shell. Uh, what happens if you feed it no argument? Right? Um, you get the weird result that something is a regular file, something is a directory, something's readable, something's writable, and, and something's executable. So that's weird, too, right? Um, when you look at the program. Right? The program appears to grab, uh, this is the second version, sorry. Right? The program appears to grab the input argument number one. Right? But input number, argument number one doesn't exist. Right? So in other words, so file is effectively um, also unassigned at this point. Right? But the fact that these all come back as true is very strange. Right? Um, but that's what happens. Uh, now, what happens if we, sorry. Uh, one more. Where is Ubuntu? Here. OK. Now, when I use the second version, test file 2. Right. OK. So that's the corrected version. Right? So in the corrected version, right, you just get does not exist. Right? And that's because in the corrected version, there is also a bug, I believe. Uh, da, 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 then, oh no, it doesn't exist. That's correct. No, it's it's the right thing. It's printing, it's printing out the right thing, right? So when you use the double quotes here, sorry here, that's well too, right? So when you enclose it in double quotes, if file has not been assigned a value, you get the empty string, right? So now the script is getting the empty string, right? So it's using the empty string here instead of using uh, instead of using null, right? So now you've got the empty string. And so now the empty string, um, first, I don't think you can have a file that's named the empty string. So that's why it tells you the empty string does not exist as a file. Right? So the um, quoting does two things. Right? So it, it limits word breaking, but it also guarantees that you get the empty string if you quote something that's not assigned. Right? OK, string expressions. So the string expressions, they test properties of strings. These are all of the string expressions, as far as I know. Right? So if you just use the string itself, right, uh, then that's true if the length of the string is not 0. Right? So as long as the string um, is assigned and, not, uh, and it does not have a length of 0, you'll get back true. Sorry, as long as the length of the string is not 0, you'll get back true. Right? Minus n string is true as long as the length of the string is greater than 0. Right? So the string actually contains something. Uh, minus z string is the, if the length of the string is equal to 0. Right? Uh, string 1 equals string 2, or string 1 equals equals string 2 tests uh, for equality. Right? Notice the equals. Right? You can use equals or equals equals, which is really uh, screwy, I think. But it works. Right? You need the spaces around the operators right? inside the, um, uh, for your condition. String 1 not equal to string 2, well, are they not equal? String 1 greater than string 2 tests if string 1 comes after string 2 uh, lexicographically. Right? It's, supposed to, uh, it's supposed to look at what region in the world you're in, or what region your shell is set to, and then use the language that your shell is set to. Um, I believe there was a bug prior to previous versions of, in earlier versions of Bash, where that never happened. Um, but now, apparently, it's been fixed. Uh, string 1 less than string 2, does string 1 come before string 2 uh, lexicographically, right? So in dictionary order. 
So let's take a look at the how to use this, right? So uh, notice the office. OK. So here we go. Right? I want, I'm going to take uh, this script. It will take in one um, input argument, right? Assign that to s, right? Uh, now, minus z, right? Dollar sign s. So that's going to check for what? Is the, string, is the length of the string equal to 0? Right? If it is, it, echo, it prints out you have an empty string. Right? Else if, right? string s less than n, right? uh, that will print out your string comes before the letter n. Right? Um, and otherwise, it'll echo after n. Right? I guess it should echo n or after or something like that. Right? OK, let's take that out for a spin. Um, here. So test string, right? Same as what's on the slide. Oh, it's test string. Uh, so it's going to do well. Let's try the empty string. Okay, that's good. That seems to work. How about the string ABC? Oh, something bombed. That's odd, right? So on line nine, n, no such file or word after, right? No such file or directory, right? And then it prints out after n, so it keeps on going even though there's an error, right? So I guess we better go debug that. Okay, so what's going on here, right? Does anybody see what's going on here? Yeah. You need to exit where? The end. So there's no, the error is happening on line nine. So there's something wrong here uh, on this line. All right, so, yeah. There's no quotes on the S. All right. Doop, boop. Okay, so remember what that's going to do? That's going to suppress any white spacing, uh, any, white, uh, any word breaking in the string S. Back to our here. All right, same thing. No, same error, right? It's complaining about n, which is really weird, right? Complaining about n. So why would it be complaining about n? Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, n is not in quotes, so n might think n is Good. A so let's try that. Let's try that. Boop, boop, boop. No, still complaining about n, <laughs> right? We're running out of options here. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Is it because it's an alif? Is it because it's a what, sorry? It's an alif. Oh, no, no, there's no, I'm not doing anything weird like that. Right. Yeah, so there's no, un, there's no characters that look like something that aren't this, right? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Yeah, I, I couldn't find it either, actually. Um, it's, it's that. It's that. Oh, they have spaces sorry? No, it needs spaces around it. But what does that symbol mean? It's the it's it's one of the redirection operators. You have to you have to escape it. It is the craziest thing, isn't it? Yeah. So or you can close the whole thing in quote in double quotes. Both of those work, right? So you know, good luck debugging that if someone didn't tell you about that, right? Um, it's things like this that make you think we should just all be using Python and not not worry about it, right? Uh, but there's a lot of bash out there, so you need to know this, right? So that's one of the fixes, right? You can do it that way. Uh, this is nice because it, if there is a space in the string s, it still captures the spaces, right? So that's good. Um, or you can, uh, yeah, you can escape it. Um, but uh, yeah, right. So there's the bug in that one, right? Okay. Otherwise, uh, oh yeah, we fixed it. So let's. Uh, I guess we should try it to make sure it actually works. Uh, so hey, there we go. Right now it works. Right, uh, n, b, something like that, right? Wait, why is that still before n? Oh, wait, wrong, so, wrong script, sorry. No, it's still before n, what am I doing? I bet you I copied and pasted the same message. No, else if uh, $s is, where is that script? Test string two. Oh, this is actually the complete one. Okay, so else if uh, $s is less than n, 
it's before n. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Otherwise, it should echo after n. Uh, but up. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Dead? No, it's still before n. Okay, now I don't know what's wrong. Uh, something's going on here. Um, I wonder. Now I'm beginning to wonder if you have to quote the n and the if you have to do it this way. Whoops. It's all right. Control S. There we go. Okay. So there's the correct fix for it, right? Which is strange, right? It's strange. Oh. Um, here, thank you. OK. So the integer expressions. So the integer expressions are used for comparing integer values, right? Notice that it's really awkward to do it this way, right? You'd like to use greater than, less than, equal to, and things like that. Right? Uh, if you use the single square brackets, you have to do it this way. Right? So int1, dash eq, int2, are they equal? Right? Dash ne, not equal. Dash le, less than or equal. Right? And so on and so on and so forth. Uh, there was something about that. Hang on. There was something I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Back here. Uh, oh, right. We're going to do it now. Sorry. Never mind. OK. Um, OK, right? Um, there's another way that I'll show you, I think, next class, where you can, in fact, use less than, greater than, or equal to. right? Um, but for now, um, let's learn about these. right? So it's something, dash, something, something, right, something, some integer value. So here's a, so that's the, this is the test string script again. right? But now, I'm actually going to test did you actually feed something into the script? Right? Uh, because that script really is, that script is assuming there's always one input. Right? So here, I'm going to test, right? So dollar sign, um, uh, dollar sign uh, hashtag or dollar sign pound, right? Or that's the number of input arguments, right? So if the number of input arguments is equal to zero, then I'm going to print out missing argument uh, and then how you're supposed to use this, right? Um, now, what does the greater than and to do? Anybody? Yep. That's right. Right. So this is an error message. You, if you're printing out an error message, you want to direct it to standard error, right? Because you don't know what the user is going to be doing with this script, right? They may be trying to capture standard error some other way. Yep. Well, let's try it. That's the answer to everything in this course, is just give it a shot and see what happens and see if it complains. Oh, sorry. Uh, but it is, the, it is the redirection operator in this case, Control S. Right? And then, so this is test string two, right? So test string two with no output. OK, so now we get that. We get no output, right? Alt tab. Uh, back to the script and put in the and. Sorry, control S. Uh, and now what do you get? So now it does, in fact, output to standard error, right? Um, doop, doop. Right. So in this case, yes, you have to, you're redirecting to and to. Um, right. OK, here's another script. Uh, this one uh, is just going to exit with 0 if the input argument is even. Sorry. And it's, going, it's supposed to exit with 0 if the input argument is, uh, is an even integer. Presumably, if it's odd, it should uh, exit with something else. So I'm going to exit with 1. Right? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to check, right, is there actually one input? Right? So if the, uh, sorry, is there, yeah. if the number of inputs is 0, then I want to exit with an error. I don't want to exit with an error, sorry. I want to exit with an error condition, an error status of one, an exit status of one, right? Because it, um, no argument is not an even integer, right? OK. I'm going to grab the value of the first input argument, 
right? And now I'm going to write this expression here, right? So remember double round brackets with a dollar sign in front, right? That's an arithmetic expansion, right? Now inside an expansion, you don't use dollar variable name, right? You just use the variable name, right? So right, everywhere we've been using the variable names, it's always, we wanted to get the value of a variable, it's always dollar value, it's always dollar variable name. Inside the arithmetic expansion, there's no dollar sign, right? So round bracket, round bracket, val, uh, remainder two, right? So divide val by two and take the remainder, right? If that's equal to zero, then we just exit with zero, right? Because that's what this program is supposed to do. Otherwise, uh, the number must be odd, so we exit with one or any other non-zero positive number. I think it's supposed to be positive um, for the exit code. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be positive. I'm not sure what happens if you exit with a negative value. Uh, but this script is buggy too. It works for the most part, um, and like Bash, all things in Bash, it works until it doesn't. Right, so is even. Right, okay, so is even zero? And then remember, it doesn't print anything, so I have to look at the result. So that's zero, that's good, right? Zero is even. Uh, one, and then I'm just gonna echo it here. You can use the um, semicolon to separate commands, right? So that's good, right? So one is odd, or not even. Two is even, right? Three is not, so it looks good, right? Uh, now, I have the, so we don't need that. Oh, we do, uh, we do need that. So what happens if I just write that, right? So no input argument, right? Still get one, that's good, and no error message, so that's super, right? Uh, what happens if I write that? Apparently ABC is even, right? It's even. Uh, and if you put in any string, right? It doesn't matter what string you feed in, it's always going to be even, right? Which is bizarre. I guess I should stop there. Um, uh, yeah, I should stop there. So we'll, uh, I'll explain what's going on there um, next class, right? And then fix the script. <laughs>